morning, you are watching New Harvest Word Empowerment Global Ministry, located in the vibrant city of Baltimore, Maryland, at 2 North Carroll Street. We're excited that you're here with us and you chose to be with us this morning. Just remember that God is God all by himself. And we're excited that we're here. We want to give honor to the Spirit of the Lord and to all of our uh, responders and who are still, after almost two years, are working to keep us safe and to all the manipulations. Uh, now, <laughs> the offices and the, the government that's working hard and diligently to help us stay safe. Remember, wash your hands, get your shots, and let's trust God that we can get over this pandemic. So we're glad to have you here, but I don't know about you, I just came to magnify the Lord. So I say to you, join together with us, get up on the edge of your bed, put your coffee down, and let's just have a old, good old fashioned praise the Lord time this morning. Remember, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, for he's worthy to be praised. Come on, here we go. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, then, uh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on, sing with me. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he Worthy to be praised. Oh, then, come on, join. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, then, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, sing. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna. Come on, y'all. Blessed be the rock. That's it. Come on. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on, put your hands together. Let's just give the Lord some praise. Come on, he's worthy of the praise. Come on, let's give him glory. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. 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 Come on. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed. Blessed be the rock. Blessed. Blessed be the rock. Blessed. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise. We're just grateful to be in the house on this wonderful day. Amen. On this communion Sunday. Amen. We pray that all of you have your communion uh, things available that we sent to you or you have at home. Amen. For those of you in the building who have them in the rear, amen. We'll make sure that we get a chance later on to participate in communion on this Sunday. The first Sunday of April 2022. My God, how fast time is going. We're already in the month of April. 
Amen. But we thank God for this day and this time. And remember that Jesus is the rock of your salvation. For those who have your Bibles, amen, we're going to be coming out of the book of John, the 19th chapter, beginning at verse 30. The 19th chapter, beginning at verse 30. I want to give a shout out, amen, to all of you all that are watching across seas and in various places in the world. We're glad to have you here. And we send God's blessings to you. A special shout out to the people in the country of Ukraine, who to this day is still suffering a needless attack from Russia. And we just pray that God would continue to send those uh, help aids in and the Red Cross and those things that can help them and continue to help them to fight their war of freedom and of peace. And we thank you, God, for them. So let's not forget to keep them in mind and keep them in your prayers for all the families and people who have lost their lives and people who have been uh, dislodged from their normal habitat to other countries and other places. So push them by your prayer that the Lord will be with them. And let's also pray for our United Nations, amen, that they will continue to support the country of Ukraine during this time of needless crisis, amen. That being said, we want to go to the Bible today, and we want to talk for a few minutes. We're in John, the 19th chapter, and we're going to begin at verse 30. And it says, when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. I want to use in this short time allowed to me, amen, uh, a topic of this wise, somebody had to die. Somebody had to die. I don't see my clock. Somebody had to die. And we notice here that as we began to embark on this text of scripture, we are now at the climax of the life of Jesus Christ on earth. Yeah. We notice here that we're at the climax of where all the expectations of man came to a screeching halt. We notice here we're at the climax of a time where the disciples saw the very one who they saw heal the sick and, and feed the hungry. And, and walk on water and, and perform miracles, he died. And I don't know what, it, what you would feel like, but I can only imagine what you feel like when you see that all hope is gone. Yes, sir. I'm probably the only one here that can relate to the fact that what you feel like when the very one you counted on was the one that stabbed you in the back. Yes. I'm probably the only one here that can attest to the fact that the very one you thought was your anchor proved not to be an anchor at all. Come on. But the reality is that somebody had to die. Yes. As we begin to embark on this passage, and not the whole passage entirely, but just this one verse, I want you to understand that death is sometimes necessary to bring life. Yes. Yes. Let me say it again. I said death is sometimes necessary to bring life. The Bible declares that through nature it says that except the seed fall to the ground and die, then the, the, the generation or the legacy or the continuation of life does not occur. Yes, sir. We being here where we are in the city of Baltimore, we are being, uh, have to address on a daily that death. We're here in a place where death has become commonplace in our society. We're here that we understand that death has a place but in this part of the scripture, somebody had to die. I want to draw your attention, if you would, back to the book of John. Amen. You will find that in the book of John, amen, uh, approximately around the ninth verse and the 22nd verse, you will find, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews, the, the ninth chapter, the 22nd verse, you will find that the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So you understand that through the course of man's existence, they sinned against God. And the only way that sin could be remission or sin could be erased or sin could be eradicated was if there was a sacrifice and if there was some blood shed to compensate for the sin. So you understand that what happened here in the scripture, in the text is, is that Jesus was the sacrifice. Yes, sir. 
Jesus was, as John called him in the book of John, he said, Behold comes the Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. So you got to understand that on this day, we remember and, and, and we memorialize the fact that Jesus Christ had to die so that you and I would have a right to the tree of life. Let me say this to you. Repentance didn't come free. Repentance came with a price. The reason that you and I can repent and should repent is because the blood was shed of Jesus because he was the Lamb of God that shed his blood so that our sins would be forgiven. Look at somebody and say, somebody had to die. Understand here that as we began to embark on this passage alone, just in verse 30, it says that when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, now I don't know about you, but I am not a vinegar lover. Mm -mm. It's bitter. It's nasty. It's unbearable. And it's something that you would not openly or arguably continually just drink because you want to drink it. Can I get an Amen. Amen. And vinegar was a, a representation to show that what Jesus had dealt with and what he had done through and what he was going through was distasteful. What he was going through was not something that he wanted to go through. In fact, the Bible says a few scriptures back that Jesus said when he was in the Garden of the city, he said, Bid this cup pass from me. But then he said, Nevertheless, not at my will, but thy will be yes. done. Understand? That the vinegar represents a time where it's not going to be pretty. The vinegar represents a time where it's not going to look good. The vinegar represents a time where it's not going to taste good. The vinegar represents a time where it's not going to feel good. But I want to encourage somebody that somebody had to die. Yeah. So the Bible says in John 3, 16, as you well know, for God so loved the world, come on, that he gave his only begotten son, come on, that whosoever believed in him would not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God thought enough of you and I to send his only son as the Lamb of God to shed his blood, to shed his blood, and to die so you and I could have a right, come on, to be put back together, or to be reunited with God. Yes. Look at your name and say, somebody had, somebody had to die. Now, in context of the scripture, we find that not only was it vinegar involved, but, but we understand that he quoted some words. He said that it is finished. And this Greek word means, and finished means, tested to leho, which means everything that was expected, everything that could have been considered, everything that was promised, everything that was entailed in the task had already been done. Yes. Yes. And I want to encourage somebody that it has been finished. Your sins have been forgiven. Amen. Your life now can be go forward prosperous because God got a way to deliver you and relieve you of your sins. Somebody had to die. Now, I got to say this, you know, uh, the reason why they chose a lamb, and the Bible says that as a custom they chose a young lamb, was because the lamb was without blemish. The reason why they chose a young lamb, because the lamb did not have sin in it. Uh -huh. That brings us to a point, because that means that I could not have died for our sins because I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That means that your best friend couldn't do it for you because they had sin in them. But only Jesus Christ was able to come down and not have sin in him and be able to be the blemish, unblemished lamb so that we could be delivered from our sins. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. I stop by to tell you somebody had to die. Yes. As we began to understand, Jesus said it is finished. And you got to understand that whenever something is finished, good God Almighty, something else begins. <laughs> Let me say it again. I said whenever something is finished, something else begins. When your birthday comes around and you turn 19, I'm going to be nice to y'all, and you turn 19, the year of 19 is over. But the new beginnings of 20 begins. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Whenever uh, you turn uh, a page in your life, and maybe you can set Jesus Christ into your life, and you begin to be in him, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, come on, he's a new creature. 
So I stopped by to tell you that whenever something is finished, something else begins. Amen. Jesus Christ on the cross said it is finished. And so us being bound to sin was over. <laughs> Jesus said it is finished. And that means us being accountable to a debt that we cannot pay is over. Amen. Jesus said it is finished. That means that you can't hold my past against me yeah, yeah. once I come to Jesus Christ. Yeah. When Jesus said it is finished, that means that what happened before doesn't account going forward. Yeah, yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, somebody had to die. And I want to stop here and pause that there's some things in your life that you need to bring the doxology to. There's some things in your life that you need to be finished with because somebody got to die. But can I turn around here? Not necessarily do somebody got to die, but some things in your life got to die. Mm. Hanging out with stuff, hanging out with people that are not concerned about the same God that you are concerned with. It got to die. Allowing things that you used to do to continue to influence you to keep doing them. It got to die. Yeah. The spirit of lying got to die. Yeah, yeah. The spirit of fornication got to die. Yeah. The spirit of adultery got to die. I don't need to run down the whole list, but I stop by to tell you not only did Jesus show us an example that it's got to die, but he showed you you got to examine yourself and say, What inside of me yeah. is living inside of me yeah. is controlling me. Yeah. That that gotta die. Look at your name and say, somebody gotta die. And so the Bible makes it clear that when Jesus said it was finished, he opened up a whole, a whole nother avenue for mankind to be reunited with God. When Jesus said it is finished, he made a new pathway for us. When Jesus said it is finished, that means he, listen now, that means he had accomplished everything that he was set to accomplish. Look at somebody and say, on earth. But I got to tell you, he was finished on earth, but he was not finished in his job. He was not finished in what he was set to do. Watch this now. You can get your heart right. You can get your mind right. You can stop drinking. You can stop smoking. You can stop cussing. But until you deal with that devil in you, I, I can't get no help here. Until you deal with that spirit in you that makes you want to do wrong when you ought to do right. Until you deal with that spirit in you that makes you want to go places that you know you shouldn't go. Until you deal with that spirit in you that makes you want to say things that you know you shouldn't say. Until you deal with that spirit in you that makes you want to be contrary and be all out of order. Until you deal with that spirit in you that makes you accept things that God didn't ordain. Until you deal with that spirit in you. Look at your name and say, somebody got to die. I'm declaring today that all of the things that are aching you that are not of God has got to die. All of the desires in you that are not of God has got to die. Die. All of the conversations that we're having that's not of God has got to die. All of the doubt that creeps up in our minds every now and then has got to die. All the disregard for righteousness that's in our lives has got to die. Look at your neighbor and say, somebody got to die. So here it is, here it is. When Jesus said it is finished, he opened up a whole nother avenue of what God wants to do for us. And I got to tell you here. God allowed him to live this life to show us that life is possible before death. But I've got a punchline here. Look at your name and say, there is life after death. I'm just talking to myself here. Let me tell you here, I want to talk to somebody who may have been in a bad relationship and at the time and time again of being disappointed and at the time and time again of being hurt and at the time and time again of being disgusted at the time and time again of getting your feelings torn apart and finally you found yourself broken. I stopped by to tell you that this spirit of brokenness, it must die because there is life after death. Look at your neighbor and say, there is life after death. Who somebody say, you need to die. God help me here. I'm just talking to myself. I ought to put up a mirror and say, Robert, you need to die so that you can live. You need to die so that you can experience the greatness of God. You need to die so you can walk in the fullness of God. You need to die so that God can be glorified in your life. Is there anybody here that got some stuff in your life that you need to let go? Anybody here got some feelings in your life that's holding you back? Anybody here that's got some fears in your life? 
life that's causing you from moving forward. Look at your neighbor and say, somebody got to die. He says here, he says here that he bowed his head, here it is, and gave up the ghost. Here then lies in, lies in the principle of being delivered. You cannot be delivered even if the preacher preach you out of the building. You cannot be delivered if the Holy Ghost falls so strong that it turns the lights and they flicker in the building. You can only be delivered when you give up what it is that you're addicted to. Jesus. Let me say it again. You can only be delivered when you give up what it is that you are addicted to. And I don't be, you know, I don't be way out on left field, but a lot of us are addicted to a lot of different things. Some of us are addicted to the wrong kind of music. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Some of us are addicted to the wrong kind of men. Yes. Uh -huh. Some of us are addicted to the wrong kind of women. Yes. Some of us are addicted to the wrong kind of drink. Amen. Amen. Some of us are addicted to the wrong kind of dance. Come on, Some of us are addicted to the wrong kind of music, the wrong kind of church, the wrong kind of car, the wrong kind of people. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. Some of us are addicted to the wrong kind of films that you watch in the dark when ain't nobody looking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. I can't get no help here. Come Some of us are addicted to a whole bunch of stuff. And the list goes on and on and on. But you can't be delivered unless you deal with that spirit inside of you that got to die. Come on. And you got to tell yourself, Jesus gave the example. They didn't take his life. He gave up the ghost. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Satan can't make you sin. You got to be willing to give up the, the spirit of sinning. Satan can't make you do something crazy. You got to be willing to stand up and say, that's not how I'm going to live. Notice here, notice here that the Bible says that Jesus gave up the ghost. Isn't anybody here? that got some stuff you need to give up. Yeah. Is there anybody here that got some stuff you need to let loose? Yeah. Is there anybody here that got some stuff you need to turn it over to the Lord? I can't see my clock. Is there anybody here that's got some stuff that says, Lord, I can't handle this by myself. Lord, I can't fix this by myself. Lord, I can't relieve myself of myself. Lord, I can't get out of my own way. And Lord, I need your help now because some of this got to die. I can't live if I keep this stuff inside of me. I can't grow if I keep this stuff inside of me. I can't reach what God has for me if I keep this stuff inside of me. I can't go to the next dimension that God wants to take me with this stuff inside of me. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, somebody got to die. Somebody got to die. Somebody I just encouraged you on this morning that if you would just realize what Christ did for us in the book of John 19 and 30, if you understand what he did, what he did was he gave us a dying example of how to die so you can live again. I said he gave us a dying example of how that we can live again. Because what the scripture says here is that he first talked about the vinegar, which was a bad taste in your mouth. Have you ever had to deal with something? that put a bad taste in your mouth? Have you ever had to deal with somebody that put a bad taste in your mouth? Have you ever had a situation that put a bad taste in your mouth? But you had to go through it through the grace of God. You made it with a bad taste in your mouth. You made it with a bad feeling in your heart. You made it with your feelings getting broke. You made it with your heart getting broke. Look at your name says, somebody got to die. Look at what he says here. Then he says, it is finished. You got to say in your mind, I'm not going to deal with this no more. I'm not going to go through this no more. I'm not going to put myself in this circumstance anymore. I'm not going to allow to be manipulated anymore. I'm not going to allow you to, or the devil to take me to places where I shouldn't be. Look at your name and say, it is finished. And you got to say to yourself, I'm finished with being disappointed. I'm finished with being hurt. I'm finished with being broke. I'm finished with being upset. I'm finished with not being happy. I can't get no help here. I stop by to tell somebody, somebody got to die. But you got to say to yourself, it is finished. I'm not going to believe what man said. I heard the Bible say, whose report are you going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. His report says I'm healed. His report says I'm delivered. His report says I'm free. His report says I'm rich and not broke. His report says I'm the head and not the tail. His report says I'm above and not beneath. His report says I'm made a royal priesthood. Look at your name with the name of somebody. Gotta die. What he says in closing, he says this. He says this. He says, he says, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. Here then is the example that Jesus Christ dying 
left to live in the world. The first example he left was that regardless how sour you taste it in your mouth, you got to have enough strength within yourself yeah. to say it's finished. <laughs> and when you say it's finished, you say, you know what? I ain't going down this road no more. I'm done with that relationship. I'm not going to allow it to cause me to think little of myself. I got to encourage you, everybody in here at one time or another made a mistake. Everybody in here has done something they regret they did. Everybody in here has done something they wish they could take back. I'm just talking to myself. Come I'm probably going in here, Come ever on. done some stuff, been some places, said some things, showed some things. Acting in certain ways, I wish I could take that. But I stopped by to tell you, you got to come to a point where it's finished in my life. I'm not going to live this way anymore. I'm not going to feel this way anymore. I'm not going to talk this way anymore. I'm not going to walk this way anymore. Why? Because somebody had to die. And I want to tell you that Jesus Christ was the somebody that died so you and I would have a right to live a free life, to live a life of joy, to live a life of peace, to live a life of happiness, to live a life of wealth, to live a life of health. Oh, God, help you. Yeah, look at your neighbor says somebody had to die. Somebody had to die. But here it is, here it is. This is the reason why he gave it up. I got to help you here. If you don't get nothing else, get this. The reason why Christ gave the ghost up, because he wanted us to understand that there is life after death. Oh God, I'm just talking to myself. Look at somebody say, there is life after death. You may feel like you're dead, but tell your neighbor, get on up. I'm a little James Brown, get on up. Get on up. Because there's life after death. The Bible says that after he gave up the ghost, he went down to hell and he got a hold of the keys that was taken from man. Look at your neighbor and say, we got keys now. And I stop by to tell you that the Bible says early on Sunday morning, he got up again. And that tells me I don't care how dead your situation is, how broken you may feel. Look at somebody and say, there is life after death. Anybody here say, I need some new life. Anybody here say, I need some new strength. Anybody here they say, I need some new faith. I stop by to encourage you that there is life after death. All right, so you got bankrupt. There's life after bankruptcy. So you got divorce. There's life after at the divorce. So you've been to jail. There's life at the jail. So you've been lied on. There's life at the being lied on. So you've been talked about. There's a life at the being talked about. And that life's name is Jesus Christ. Look at your name and say, Jesus is the life at the death. Somebody had to die. And when you die, call on the name of Jesus and you shall be saved. Call on the name of Jesus and you shall be delivered. Call on the name of Jesus and he'll turn it around. Call on the name of Jesus and he'll make it right. Call on the name of Jesus and he'll straighten it out. Call on the name of Jesus and he'll heal your body. Look at your name and say, somebody had to die. But there is life after death. The Bible says, except the seed fall to the ground and die, it will not bring forth the fruit. I stop by to tell you if you feel like you're dead. Look at your name and say, get on up. But it's time for God to turn it around. Get on up. Because it's time for God to show you that there is life after death. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I stop by to tell you, don't you let the devil tell you that it's over because it's not over until God says it's over. Don't you let the devil tell you it ain't going to work out because I heard the psalmist say, Jesus, he will work it out. Jesus, he will work it out. Who your neighbor say, it's not over until God says it's over because there is life after death. But somebody had to die. My God, I want to my question on, is, Jesus, thank you, Lord. We talked about Jesus died. Yes. But what about you? Come yes. on. Every one of us, including myself, have moments and situations where we feel like it's just hopeless. Yes. 
everybody, including myself, have moments where you feel like it's not worth it. Let me see my clock. You say it's not worth it. And I just want to encourage you to know there is life after death. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. After the doctor said this is what's wrong with you, there's life after death. After the doctors tell you that there's no hope, there's life after death. I know too many people who the doctors have given up on. And they said, well, there's nothing else we can do. We're going to send them to hospice. I got an Aunt Gloria, Aunt G down in Corain, North Carolina. Ten years ago, now 12 years ago, they said she was done. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And my godmother and sister called me and said, Bishop, we got to go down there. So we went and we prayed the prayer of faith. Come on. A family member was already planning the funeral. Ah. And already saying what they was going to do and what she was going to wear. Uh -huh. Why she was listening, even though they thought she was in a coma. Yeah. Come on. And we prayed the prayer of faith. And 12 years later, now. Yeah. She moving around and on her own drive and still doing everything she want to do. So there is life after death. Come on. Jesus. Don't think because the marriage was resolved and it was all hard and it was a nasty breakup that you can't find love again because you can. Come yeah. on, Jesus. You better say so. Don't think because your heart was broken that you could never trust again because it was so de devastating to you. You can. Yeah, Jesus. Don't think that after financial ruins you can't figure out a way and God can't open doors for you to get yeah. back on your feet yeah. because you can. Hallelujah. Don't think because Social Security said you're no longer uh, the benefits have been denied and you're not going to make it and on and on and on. Don't think that there's not life after death because it is. Yes, Lord. Don't think that when your job says, I'm sorry, but we don't have no need for you and we're going to have to let you go, that there's not life after death because it is. Yes. And I stopped by to tell somebody that Jesus gave up the ghost because he knew there was life after death. So I want to leave this story and this thought with you that there is life after whatever death you have gone through. Death doesn't necessarily mean the loss of life. Death could mean a devastating event that took the life out of you. Anybody ever been through a situation where you feel like it took the life out of you. I did look to my and said, but I'm still here. But I'm still here. Yes, Lord says. You are living proof yes. that there is life after death. Yes. So I want to share with you while we're here in this moment that there is life after death. And you cannot in no wise allow Satan to make you think because what happened to you that you'll never be successful. That because what happened to you, you'll never grow. Because of what happened to you, you'll never survive. Because of what happened to you, you will never overcome. I just stopped by to tell somebody that somebody had to die. And Jesus being who he is, he was the one that died first. So that we don't have to have or the kind of life or the kind of death that he experienced. Yes. But I just want to tell you that number one, somebody had to die. And number two, that there is life after death. There is life after death. Let me say it again. There is life after death. Death. I'm probably the one in here that's been through some level of death before. I'm probably the one in here that's been so devastated by a circumstance that I was ready to die. I'm not the one in here that's ever been through something that was so horrific I didn't even want to live anymore. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. But I just want to tell you that yeah. there is life after death. Amen. Amen. When I got shot in the face, I thought I was going to die. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I'm here. Hallelujah. And the Lord blessed me where uh, you can't even tell I got shot. Nah, Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Come on. I got shot in the face. Y'all ain't going to talk Jesus. to me. Jesus. And when I got stabbed, oh, I was losing blood so fast, I thought it was over. 
but I'm still here. I stop by to tell you, I don't care how horrific the case is, how how difficult or devastating the obstacle seems to be. Remember that somebody had to die, and that somebody was Jesus. Yes. Yes, God. He died and was presented as the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. So that when his sins, when our sins came before God, watch this now, we will be covered by his blood. Yes. I dare look at somebody and say the blood still works. The blood still works. Still works. You gotta understand. You gotta understand. That's not a license to continue to sin. Uh -huh. The Bible says, uh, "It says, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid." Uh huh. Uh huh. Come on now, because on. for he who says he is without sin must erase himself or stay away from sin. And I don't mean the sin, the sin, because it's sin everywhere. I mean just don't be a participant of it. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Amen. Look to the name and say, somebody, somebody had, to die. had to die. I want to talk to the person who feels like it's over. It's nothing else I could do. My mama don't understand. My dad don't understand. My brothers and sisters won't help me. All the people I've given money to, all the people I've helped, all the people who I've been there for have turned their backs on me. And you feel like it's a done deal. Yes. Well, we've got good news for you. Jesus Christ died so that in moments like this, you can realize there is life uh -huh. after death. Amen. And death only comes, watch this now, so that life can begin. Okay. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. Look at nature. Look at nature. Look at nature. The plants, every year they die. They freeze. They disappear. They go away. But in the springtime, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at your neighbor say, it's springtime. It's springtime. What that means is it's time for us to jump up yeah. <laughs> with a new joy. Yeah. It's time for us to jump up with a new peace. It's time for us to jump up with a new revelation. It's time for us to jump up with the heartiness to serve and trust God. Because he died, we have life after death. So this message is for you. This message is for me. There is life after death. But somebody had to die. So what is it that needs to die in you so that you can live? I'm going to pause on that for a second. What is it in you? you and the funny part is you know you. Some of us got tempers. Some of us are arrogant. Some of us are, are, are jealous. Some of us have low self-esteem. Some of us have been so broken so many times that we feel like we could never be repaired. Some of us uh, look at life in a different way because life, has, in your opinion, has not been favorable to you. It's got to die. Yes, yes, yes. Some of us got our old ways. And, and it amazes me. You can tell when people are really saved. Is when a crisis hit. Which guy shows up? Come on, you better say so. Does old Robert Wise show up? Come on, come on <laughs> or does the saved Robert Wise show up? Now, I gotta tell y'all, I struggle with it. I ain't trying to front and act like I'm so saved, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. No, 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 no. I struggle with it. Because the old Robert want to jump up and let you know you just stepped on the wrong foot. Yes. And I have to struggle with telling old Robert, down boy, down boy. My wife looks and she says, baby, if something happens, somebody say something out of the way, do something wrong, my wife says, baby. She just lean over and touch me, baby. <laughs> Y'all looking at me crazy. I'm just, being, I'm just being 100 with you. And I'm being 100 to let you know that none of us, regardless of where you are in God, are above being tempted to be the old you. Y'all yeah. yeah. can say what you want to say. But the reality is that everybody listening, everybody in this room got something that irritates you to bring that old you out. Yes. That person got to die. In order for you to get what God really has for you, that person got to die. I'm probably the only person in this room, Elder, that, that sometimes will show you you don't know who you're talking to. I can tell. Come on, Jesus. That's probably just me. I'm probably in here. <laughs> you know who I am? Uh oh. I'm Chris. 
And I mean, some people, you know, I mean, only certain people that say stuff like that, you know. And, 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 and when, when the old man is used to being like that, it's easy to go back to him. But he died. So you don't have to. The Bible says this way. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. At that moment, not, not a week, not a month, not a year later, not I'm working in progress. At that moment, you are a new creature. Yes, Old things pass away. Behold the body. He says, look, oh my God, he didn't respond. Something's wrong. Oh my God, he didn't cuss me out. Something's wrong. Oh my God, I still got my left jaw. Something's wrong. Oh my God, he didn't turn my car over. Y'all looking at me crazy. And what that means is, is that the old man said, I don't get down like that no more. Amen. This is how I get down. Bless him, God. <laughs> somebody had to die. And you need to let that somebody in you that's hindering you from being what God has called you to be. It's got to die. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says that Jesus gave up the ghost. Mm -hmm. And it says that he gave it up. He didn't take it. He gave it up. And that means that in order for us to get our deliverance, we got to give it up. You got to give it up. You got to give it up. No, 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 nobody's, no, 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 no two gallons of anointed oil poured on your head and in your mouth is going to make you stop doing Amen. what needs to die inside of you. Amen. You got to give it up. Come on, preacher, preach. You got to make a choice. Think. You got to Think. give it up. Think. You wonder why they keep doing it? Because you haven't given it up. Jesus, come on. And people who tell you, I, I lived a miserable life of sin, they're lying. Because sin is not miserable, it feels good. Yeah, Y'all had to say amen. I'm just saying, yeah. I was out there doing my thing with everybody Jesus. I want to do with, it felt good. Yeah. Come on. The challenge was to say, I ain't doing that no more. Come on, Jesus. And I'm telling you, I mean, there was packages that came to me tied. I mean, they was packaged just right. Yes, come on. And I had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I ain't doing it anymore. There was temptations that come to me that's like, my God, God Himself will probably step on His temptation. Come on. But I had to make a decision. Come on. Amen. Come on. Preach. Tell it. You have to give up yes, God. what it is that's keeping you from standing up All right. All right, God. to what God has called you up mm -hmm. to be. Oh, that was good. I don't care, y'all. Y'all don't, don't say that right there was good. That right there was good. You got to give up what's holding you up to what God has called you up to be. Somebody had to die. We pray that this word today was a blessing to you. We pray that this word was able to encourage and enrich your spirit that you understand that Jesus Christ died so that we would have a right to the tree of life. And he gave up the ghost. He gave us on the cross a working plan, a, a, a dying plan. Listen to this. He gave us a dying plan of how to live. Think about that. Wow. And the dying plan, I'm going to regroup and I'm gone. I'm regroup for the sake of those that have missed, missed just entered in or just need be attending us. And I want to make sure you get this message. Y'all made me go over my time, but it's okay today. Look at what he says here. He says, he uh -huh. says that, number one, that it was the vinegar. The taste in your mouth, that's unfavorable. The taste in your mouth, that doesn't match your taste buds. The taste in your mouth, that doesn't match your expectations. The taste in your mouth, that doesn't mount up to where you thought you would be by now. The taste in your mouth, that doesn't present or doesn't bring forth what you thought you should have brought forth by now. But Jesus endured it because he wanted to be able to say, it is finished. And so you got to say to your stuff that's bothering you and those demons that are chasing you and those things that are going on in your life and that stuff that got to die, you got to say to them, I'm finished. Here's my doxology. I ain't going through this no more. You're not going to do this no more. You're not going to control me anymore. You're not going to manipulate me anymore. You're not going to sucker me into something that God didn't ordain for me to do anymore. You know why? Because it is finished. Mm -hmm. And he bowed his head 
And a sign of battle your head, watch this now, is submission. I'm done preaching, but I gotta bring this point out. Who or what are you submitting to? That's a good question right there now. Because if you still submit to you in your own ways, you're going straight directly, do not pass, go to hell. Mm -hmm. You don't even get a get out of get out of hell, get out of jail free card. You're going straight <coughs> to hell. It's got to die in you. And finally, he says he gave up the ghost. He didn't take his life. He gave it up. So here's the principle. Number one, you got to be able to deal with stuff that's distasteful in your life. You got to be able to see the end of something that appears to have no end. Oh, that was good. You got to see the end of something that appears to have no end. Can I tell you all this? Everything in our world, everything in our life, Everything in your mind has an expiration date. Amen. That's right. Amen. Everything. That's right. Amen. Everything. Everything. I learned this lesson from my wife. Every time I go to the store, she'll call me on the phone and say, Babe, you, you in the drugstore? I said, Yes, she said, Check the expiration date. <laughs> Most men don't care about that. You tell me to get a loaf of bread, I'm going to walk through the first loaf of bread I get, I'm going to grab it. All right, I got some bread. <laughs> Amen. But my wife says, baby, you got to check the expiration date. There's a reason why. Watch this. First of all, it says that everything comes to an end. And it says in order for it to have its maximum potential or its maximum uh, expectation, it has to be utilized by a certain time. Watch this now. Because, oh God, because if you miss your season and you're trying to operate in the last season, in this season, watch this, your, your ability to maximize declines. Good God, my help me God. Whoa. So in other words, a lot of us, we are still functioning in, in winter when we're supposed to be going to spring. Uh -huh. And if you're trying to operate uh, in, in winter while in spring, this is what it's going to look like. You're walking around with a mink coat on and it's 70 degrees outside. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. You ain't going to talk to me. In other words, you're out of season, you're out of place, you're out of order, you're out of uniform. You ain't going to talk to me. And on top of that, you're uncomfortable. All because... You wouldn't submit and give it up. He gave up the ghost because he wanted us to know there is life after death. Even if you lost a loved one, God rest their souls and God bless all of you who during this time during this pandemic have lost loved ones and family members and co-workers and, and people who you knew and people you were concerned about, people you grew up with. They, they, they're dying. Almost a million, over a million folk have died as a result of the pandemic. And that left at least seven to eight million people who had to deal with the loss of that person. But I want to encourage you that there is life In Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Thank you. So remember, if you're in a dead place, I told you James Brown said, get on up. Get on up from your dead place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And remember, there is life after death. We pray this message was a blessing to you. And if you hear you heard this word, this word spoke to your spirit. And it said to you that there is life after death, that somebody had to die. Let your pride die in this moment. Let your brokenness die in this moment. Let your feeling unworthy die in this moment. And let you say that it's time for me to live after experiencing the depths of life. It's simple, very simple. All you got to do if you're listening and you're not driving, amen, I want you just to raise your hand when you are and say, Lord, Lord. I realize, I realize that you died for my sin. I realize, I realize that you are Lord and Savior. I realize that because you died, there is life after death in you. Lord, come into my life that I may live and not die. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put them hands together all across the country in the building. You want to welcome you to the royal family. Remember, somebody had to die, and there is life after death.
very quickly. We want you, this mission has been a blessing to you. You want to sow to this ministry, this is good ground, amen. This is good fertile ground, amen. And we want to just give you three ways that we do that we sow into this ministry. Uh, the Bible says in Luke 6 and 38, it says, Given it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. And I stop by to tell you, it also says, whatsoever measure ye meet, shall it be, shall it be returned back unto you. So this is good ground. And if you want to sow to this ministry and partner with us and to help us establish and continue to do the things that we do to help a dying world believe and know that Jesus Christ is still Lord and that he died for your sins and mine. And not only that, that there is life after death. This is how you do it. The first way is you go and give Levi. Look us up. New Harvest Word. Give Levi. You can look us up with... Uh, to North Carolina and look us up, you can do, do give by. Then you can do for all of you uh, uh, tech savvy folk, amen. You can reach us on our cash app, which is dollar sign New Harvest Word, amen. And you can give in that way. Or you can do it the old fashioned way, like Dickie Williams and Sister Marsha does out there in Texas. How she does, they do it, they put it in the mail. And they do it the old fashioned way. And you can send it to, to North Cary Street. Baltimore, Maryland, 21223. 2 North Cary Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21223. We pray this message has been a blessing to you, and we hope and pray that the Lord will encourage you and strengthen you to know that he died for us so that we could realize there is life after death. Amen. I just thought about it. We want to do communion real quick. Woo-wee. Y'all almost missed. We was going to have it. Y'all almost missed communion. Amen. Amen. For those of you who have uh, your... Yes. Yes. For those at home, I think we sent them to you. We hope that you have them. We're going to prepare ourselves to do communion uh, in the book of Corinthians. Amen. 11th chapter, starting around the 28th verse. We want to bless the Lord in our communion. Today is first Sunday, and this is something we like to do every first Sunday. We like to remember the sacrifice that was given for our lives. We want to remember that Jesus Christ, amen, died and shed his blood so that you and I would have a right to the tree of life. Amen. 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 In the back. So we want to thank you uh, for participating on the way, on the way. Go ahead. So I want to just thank you for being with us on today. And we want to commune today in this way to remember the fact that Jesus died for our sins. And this is something we do every first Sunday. Uh, and we're so excited to have our, our partners and our members all across the country to be able to participate with us uh, in this event on Sunday from afar, amen, because we realize that this is something we do. Uh, in uh, Corinthians um, 11 and 28, amen, you want to go there real quick. And just to echo what the scripture said, amen, 2 Corinthians, if that's first. Go to 1, first, first. And we want to uh, do what the Bible says, and it says in, in 1 Corinthians 11 and 28. It says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. And what this says to us is, is that before we take communion, let's make sure that we purify our hearts and our spirits. And we have need of repenting, we need to do that now. We have need of asking God for forgiveness, we need to do that now. Before we partake of this supper. Amen. So we're going to wait a few minutes. And so we're going to take a moment of silence and allow everybody to examine themselves. If you need to, ask the Lord to forgive you for whatever it is that you need forgiveness for. Let's do that now. Let's pray, God. We thank you for this bread and this wine that is the representation of your body that was broken for us and your blood that was shed for the sins 
And we thank you, God, that you loved us enough to redeem us by the blood and the bread to Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. And God, we take this not lightly, but we ask you, God, as we take it, we do it in remembrance of you, the sacrifice that you gave for us because you love us. And us doing so, show our love and appreciation to you for what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I trusted everybody's got theirs. Couldn't get it open? Okay, we're going to wait a few minutes. We thank God for technology. When I was when I was coming up in church, we didn't have this stuff right here. We had them little saltine crackers. I was raised in a Baptist church, so we had saltine crackers and we had Manischewitz wine. Uh, looking at me crazy. We had Manischewitz wine, didn't we? Read? And and, and 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 the preachers they we got the purple wine and the preachers in the center of the thing they had the clear wine. You know, I, I'm just saying we we've come a long way. I mean, I I, I, wonder, I used to wonder as a kid why the deacons were so happy on communion day. They, they was happy. They was happy. We said somebody had to die, but somebody had to drink the wine. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You know all that wine that was left over. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all looking at me crazy. But on a serious note. The Bible says that he took the bread after giving thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which was broken for you. Take the eulogy. And likewise, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, which was shed for you. Drink the eulogy. And I'm not exactly certain as to what they sang in that day, the Bible says they went out to the Mount of Olives and they began to sing. So the song that I like on, on, on this Sunday is a song that, that we sang as a kid. I remember this song like from yesterday. And goes this way. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. For me, come on. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood saved me. Come on, one more time. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood saved me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Two announcements, one of which I need you all to go to YouTube, call everybody you know, go to YouTube and say, I like it. Check us and say you like us on YouTube. Yes, Amen. And we need to get at least a thousand people to like us on YouTube. Uh, to help us further advance the ministry on YouTube and in this media market yes. that we live in. So tell all your friends, go to YouTube, find New Harvest Word and Family Ministries, and check I Like It, amen, just to help us along, amen. Also want to give a shout out, amen, to my nephew, his name is Celon Dexter Wise IV. Uh, he and his wife Ashley and, and their two sons uh, are being, uh, have been nominated for a Grammy. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 For a Grammy for amen. producing and creating a children's album, Christian album and book. Amen. And so they amen. have been nominated to get a Grammy. So today we're going to all be cheering for the Wise family. Right. Amen. amen. Uh, yes, Salon, Ashley, and uh, Caleb, and um, Salon the fifth. Amen, amen. My grandfather, my father, my brother, his son. Yeah, Salon the fifth. So we have in our family five generations of C. Dexter Wise, in his case, the fifth. So we want to uh, encourage them and keep praying for them for their work in ministry, for their work in God, and for God putting that gift of being able to accomplish in them. And it's being recognized today uh, as a Grammy. They're going to be um, recognized for. Uh, that they've been nominated. We're going to believe God that they bring home the gold. Amen. 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 So that being said, we thank you for being with us on today. And remember, somebody had to die, but there is life Amen. after death. 
Come on, put your hands together. We love you, God. We'll see you later.